Siliclastic or detrital sedimentary rocks are those that are made up of materials that have settled out of some area. It's typically a body of water. So at the bottom of the ocean, you'll get some really fine grains settling and forming things like shale. In shallower waters, you'll get larger grains settling out and forming sandstone. Somewhere like the bottom of a creek, you'll get large rounded rocks forming something like a conglomerate or perhaps the uh, cliffside or a face side up in dry regions where you don't have um, the rounding forces of moving water, you'll get larger, more angular rocks stuck together and forming breccia. So the larger, more angular rocks forming breccia, you can see it here where you have the rectangular pieces, you have pointed pieces. You can tell by looking at these grains that these grains didn't tumble very far. If you were to take a rock and roll it over and over and over again just for ages and miles down a uh, down a road or down a rock surface over time those little bumps along the corners and um, nicks that'll chop off the sharp bits will round and smooth and make smaller your grains so if you have large grains that are angular you know that those grains were transported very far so this one breccia would be found maybe at the bottom of a sheer rock face or a bunch of material has accumulated and then later lithified into something like this. Now imagine those same pieces are then transported by perhaps a waterfall or a moving creek, uh, maybe a river, and those grains are becoming rounded. The initial part of their journey, they're still going to be rather large in size, but they'll become rounder and smoother. So you'll form something like a conglomerate. You can see the individual pieces. The individual pieces are poorly sorted, meaning they are different sizes, but you still see that they are stuck together. So here we have another poorly sorted conglomerate. You have large sizes and small sizes, but they're all pretty rounded. If you found something like this, you might expect for it to have formed really shallow along a shoreline, next to a slow moving body of water that doesn't have enough power to really roll and um, diminish the size and angularity of those, those rocks or grains. Other siliclastic rocks we have are our sandstones. So these sandstones, you can have different sizes of grains. You have the larger grains here, you have the finer, smaller grains, but you can still see and even feel the grains. As I'm rubbing along this, it feels the same as sandpaper. So you still can feel the grains, see the grains, we have different colorations. We have our more mafic and our more melfic, uh, felsic specimens, but we still have sandstones. This too is a sandstone. It's even smaller, finer grains. And towards the smaller end of grain sizes, moving from grain sizes, our largest grain sizes would be something like a boulder, and then we have a cobble, like cobblestone roads or cobblestone pathways. Those are, those are the ones that are sort of hand-sized. Moving down from there, you have gravel, it's more angular, pebbles. Um, so those are pretty big grain sizes, stuff that you would find in conglomerates. Going even smaller than gravel and pebbles, you get things like small gravel or coarse sand. Then you have fine sand. Um, then moving even smaller than sand, you have silt and clay. Silt and clay are going to be really, really small grains. So even though they can sediment out and be detrital and form these types of rocks, you're not going to be able to see the individual grains. So this here, super duper tiny grains. When you're looking at a specimen, you can kind of tell how far from the original rock the sedimentary rock has formed. So if you have something that's really, really small grains, and now you're remembering my analogy of rolling a rock down the road, the farther that grain is transported, the smaller and more uniform in grain size the end specimen's grains are going to be. So if you have pretty far distance, you know, the shoreline of the ocean is probably pretty far from the original rock. So those rocks get very, very small, but it's not as tiny grained as something that can remain um, buoyant or aloft in the ocean before it settles out in very, very deep ocean. These little tiny grains of the clay and silt, those don't settle out until very, very far in the ocean. If you're right along the shoreline, something this small grain is going to be caught up in the turbulence of those rolling waves versus settling out right there like the sand does because it's heavier. Then if you look at something that has these pretty big pieces, 
This one here is bioclastic, but if you have pretty big pieces, it's going to be much nearer the source. So with siliclastic, you look at the grain size to help differentiate what it is, and you can also look at whether there's different grain sizes within the same piece being poorly sorted, or if they're all the same type of grain size, making it well sorted.